Hello, we're on Research Methods Catch-Up taking a look at correlations and in this session we're going to be doing an overview of correlations. Let's take a look specifically at what you're going to be doing. Right, we'll be considering what the aim of a correlational piece of research is as a research method, looking at some examples of research that employ correlations and importantly distinguishing between correlations and experimental methods. And here is the specification. Now, correlations is a bit sneaky on the specification because it's mentioned at a couple of different points. So you may have missed some reference to correlations. The key things are correlations are research methods, analysis of the relationship between covariables, the difference between correlations and experiments. We'll be looking at correlations and correlation coefficients and talking about the different types of correlations. Now that's what the spec says, but how does that translate in terms of the skills you're going to be required possibly to show in the examination? Well, you will obviously be able to describe what the purpose of a correlation is as a research method. That's to say what it's actually for. You'll be able to give a couple of examples of differences between a correlation and an experiment. Not only will you be able to draw a scattergram, you also might be asked to interpret it. That's to say explain what it shows. You'll look at different correlational findings and use correlation coefficients to explain the findings of research. Importantly as well, you're going to be evaluating the use of the correlational method. Part of the discussion of correlations will be related to reliability and validity and how they link with correlational research. You'll be applying your knowledge of correlational research to scenarios. Don't forget, AQA love those AO2 application scenario questions. And you may also be asked to be design a piece of correlational research. Now, the first question is, what do you know already? Three important terms here related to correlations, one of which is correlation. Then we've got correlation coefficient and covariables. Now, there is space in your booklet where I would like you just to pause the video here and jot down what you already know related to the following terms. I'll just talk you through those terms. Feel free to add anything into the booklet that you didn't get. So a correlation. A correlation is about assessing the relationship between two values. So to check if two numbers are related. And here we've got an example. Do the number of hours sleep we have each night correlate with age? Or what is the relationship between hours of sleep and age? Then we've got correlation coefficient. Now the correlation coefficient is a value or a number that tells us the strength of our correlation and also the type of correlation that we have. So the correlation coefficient will be a value between minus one and one, or you might say minus one and plus one. Then we've got covariables. Covariables is a very important term in correlational research because in correlational research, there is no independent and dependent variable. What you are measuring are covariables. So the covariables are the two sets of numbers that are being correlated or the values that I'm looking to see if there is a relationship between. So you can see there the example on the screen, we've got number of hours you sleep each night and your age, two different covariables. Okay, so let's start with really, really important thing related to the correlational method. That is that it is not an experiment. So we're going to look at the difference between correlations and experiments. So on the left hand side there, you've got some terms related to experiments. And on the right, you're going to put the correlation version. So on the left, we've got experiments assess the effect of one variable, the IV, on another variable that's measured, the DV. And lab experiments are likely to determine cause and effect. What I want you to do is maybe pause the video here for a short moment and see if you can use the space in your booklets to extend on that. So what is the whereas? What do correlations do? So you might want to pause the video now. Right, what is the whereas? So the first whereas is that correlations do not use discrete separate conditions, that's to say independent variables. They look at the relationship between covariables. 
So there's no manipulation of something and changing something. It's simply to assess if two variables are related. The second is you can't, what well, you can't scientifically determine a cause and effect relationship in a correlation because there is no cause and effect. There is no manipulation of an independent variable to cause a change or effect in a dependent variable. So the use of covariables in correlational research is probably going to mean that there are other variables that may impact that relationship. So all I can say from a correlational piece of research is that variables are related. Alrighty then, let's look at the variables in correlational research. So when we're looking at a piece of correlational research, we've usually, for the purposes of your A-level, got two variables, those co-variables, and they're going to be measured quantitatively, so numerically. Then we look at the strength of the correlation to determine what type of correlation we have. And we can look at the strength of a correlation by doing a statistical test, but do not fear, you are not required to do that. So here we've got an example. So we've got a researcher may want to investigate the relationship between the time spent studying and performance on the test. So there you can clearly see we've got two co-variables. One is the time spent studying and the second is performance on the test. Let's take a look at some other examples. Next one, a researcher may correlate scores on a verbal fluency test with scores and an IQ test to see if they are related to each other. So there we've got our two variables. Number one, score on the verbal fluency test. Number two is score on the IQ test. And you can see there what's important is just like in experiments, I do have to operationalize my variables. Another one. A psych psychology student may want to find what relationship exists between stress and illness. So thinking about that piece of research, if I wanted to operationalize those variables, I'd have to think of some way to effectively measure stress and illness. Probably, let's face it, most likely to be some kind of self-report. So there's just some examples of what co-variables are and how we can pick them out of research. Now you're going to have a go. So your job is going to be, there's going to be a piece of research appear on screen and I want you to use the space in your booklet to write down what the co-variables are. So I suggest when the piece of research appears on screen, you pause it and give yourself time to consider. Here's our first one. A researcher asked participants to recall as many words as they could from a list of 30. He wanted to see if their self-reported alcohol consumption the night before was related to their memory performance. So take a moment, consider, pause the video and make a note of what you think the co-variables are here. Right, the co-variables are the number of words recalled that would be the memory. And the second one would be the self-reported amount of alcohol each participant was drinking. So well then, if you got that, let's do some more. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we've got a researcher wanted to see if there was a correlation between a person's mood and their stress levels. All participants self-reported their mood on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being great mood and one being very low mood. Each participant completed a stress survey and were assigned a stress score. All participants were debriefed at the end of the study and reminded of their right to withdraw, of course. What I want you to do again, pause the video and see if you can write down what the co-variables are here, please. So the co-variables are mood, which is their self-report on a scale of 1 to 10, and stress, their stress score after the completion of the survey. Next, we've got a doctor wanted to investigate whether there was a relationship between waiting times and patient satisfaction. He recorded how long each sorry, patient had to wait for an occupation from the date of a referral. Each patient was asked to fill in the feedback form after the operation to score their satisfaction as a percentage, with 100% being more than satisfied and 1% being severely dissatisfied. Pause the video and write down the co-variables, please. So the first co-variable is how long they waited, so the time between referral and operation. And the second co-variable is their satisfaction, which is the percentage call recorded on the form. 
Okay, folks, hopefully that session was useful. Join us in the next session for more on correlations.